let me introduce you to the Gas Bros, a dual group Ironman team that consists of me and my brother. They have a goal to achieve as much as possible in a game by only relying on each other for help. Our end goal is to finish all Slayer and boss logs, as well as do all completable achievements. Finally, a group Ironman mode is out on RuneScape 3. Been waiting for this for years. Let's just select the mode. I'm making female character at first, just until I do recruitment drive quest, and then gonna change it back. And just one thing, can I get into the mainland without adding my teammate and progress my account while waiting for my bro to be back in a couple hours? Let's try to create a group. Of course, gonna choose a competitive one because playing regular is like playing a main account in my mind. Of course, our group name will be a shameless plug for YouTube. Maybe one or two people will notice that. Okay, so now the last question remains. Can I just confirm the group now and just add second member later? Apparently not. I need to add at least one other person to be able to play the game. I guess I will just spend some time changing my settings since I will need to do it eventually. And we are not racing for worlds first anyway. We are playing a marathon, not a sprint. Some quick tips for everyone. Don't forget to skip the boat cutscenes. Make sure you have slim headers because they are taking so much space on the screen. Make sure to remove game clock because that spot is reserved for Slayer counter. If you do not want spam, just change your loot beam value into at least 50k, can also be 100k. Make sure you set up action bar buttons to make it convenient. Filter your game messages unless you want to see every time you chop a tree. And most importantly, don't forget action bar binding so PVM will be much more convenient in the future. Okay, my bro is here. Time to confirm our shameless plug name. And competitive team is formed. We can finally start playing the game. By the way, group Ironman have this journey achievements that can help you up upgrade your group Ironman storage. But since first few days going to be just solo, I don't have a reason to focus on them. It took us like 10 minutes to find out where to claim group Ironman armor. That's a decent progress. Okay, there won't be any more live commentary from now on, at least for this episode, I think. So what I did at first was went to Boothorb and skipped all these trash daily challenges to finally get normal daily challenges. Then some random dude came up with 20 bonds donation just kidding, actually, it was my main account. I just gave myself 20 bonds so I can play this account for a whole year. Right after, I went to Diamondheim to do some dungeoneering and get some easy early levels. I was literally getting level ups non-stop and it only took like 20 minutes to get 100 total level. After getting 30 dungeoneering, I decided that it's enough for now and I should go and do some quests, maybe just do one or two tiers of group Ironman journey achievements. The first quest I did was the Blood Pact, that was like 5 minutes quest, plus it gave one level in each combat skill. Next up, I did the Restless Ghost, so that I can complete Beginner Lumbridge Diary. Also, after doing the Restless Ghost quest, we got level 1 journey achievements done because while I was doing the engineering, my brother did all the other required achievements. Another quick notice, if you want to claim your prayer experience from Restless Ghost, you need to talk to Father Ayareterek. He will give you some bones that you can bury as well as prayer XP lamp and it will get you like 9 prayer levels. Also, if you talk to him and check your gravestones, you should get 
another achievement that I feel like it's the only achievement in beginner Lumbridge section that's locked behind the quest. Later on, I went to complete some OG quests, also known as Sheep Shearer and Cook Assistant, that gave me a couple levels in crafting and cooking. I went to claim my beginner Lumbridge diary rewards and I got 500 XP lamp, which I decided to put on fletching since first like 20 fletching levels are really annoying to train. Since I was trying to save some time, I was doing like two quests at the same time. For example, while doing Imcatcher, I completed Meets of the White Lands at the same time. And after that, I just went to claim my rewards. I got another XP lamp that I used on Fletching. Then I went to do Necromancy Tutorial, followed by Witch's Potion mini quest, Swept Away, Shield of Arav, Demon Slayer, Let Them Eat a Pie. Wolf Whistle. I was literally just flying through those early game quests. Then I went to slay Vampire. While doing that, I completed Ernest the Chicken. Then I went to tell Morgan that I slayed Vampire and I got a decent XP lamp. At first, I decided to lamp Magic, since Magic will be my go to style for all those early game quests. At this point, I already had 200 quest points, so I went and completed Gertrude's cat so, so that I can grow kitten. I will really need a, a grown cat for later quests. Now that there haven't been any serious bugs and we won't have rollback, I decided to just use my 20 bonds and get one year premier membership. The very first minute in Members World, I went and completed quiz in Varrock Museum. And this way I boosted my Hunter and Slayer by like 8 levels. Next up, I have completed Archaeology Tutorial to boost my Archaeology from level 1 and went up to complete some more easy quests. First one, Druidic Ritual, and the next one was Death Plateau. After completing Death Plateau, I used all of my XP lamps on farming. This way I boosted it from level level 1 2. Then I went up and completed Circus DND because I want to do it before tomorrow's daily reset. I got 7 agility from it and unlocked Surge ability. Then I quickly completed Pirate's Treasure quest and a shadow over Ashdale. I just couldn't stop questing, so I went and claimed my Wicked Hood and used Essence to complete Priest in Peril quest. I also went and unlocked Caniff's Lodestone then. Next up, I hit 300 total levels by gaining a random mining level. After finishing Divination Tutorial achievements, I got some Flickering Energy. I was doing some Dev Plateau supply runs after the quest to get some simple XP lamps and my kitten finally grew up. I won't need to take care of it anymore and can just put it in a bank for future quests. As soon as I got 5 crafting, I went and completed Gunnar's ground quest because it gives a fat quest point boost. Well, since I was in Barbarian Village either way, I went and completed Stronghold of Security and Stronghold of Safety dungeons and got myself some XP lamps and as well as got 10k GP from the first one to cover my expenses. While doing Goblin Diplomacy quest, I managed to get my first ever collection log item, only a few hundred left. So I am nowhere close with being done with quests. I went to complete Goblin Diplomacy, then completed What's Mine is Yours. Got enough mining levels already to do the Night Sword, so I just went and did that. This boosted my smithing by a lot. Right after, I went to do Recruitment Drive and found out that Ancestor Spirit's Aura can help with a lot of early game quests. Basically, even if you have very low accuracy, this aura can still deal damage. So while doing recruitment drive, I was hitting like once to that guy and the fight would have taken 10 minutes. I just activated aura and one hit it. 
as soon as it procced. I needed a short break from questing, so I went to rune span and AFK'd some rune crafting. This way, I got 400 total level milestone. I decided that the most perfect way to finish the first day of group Ironman would be to complete Violet is Blue and Violet is Blue 2 quests because. I can get decent XP lamps from these, and I can put all of the XP on Herblor. And the higher Herblor level will allow me to get more bonus experience from these black pearls that I got from Shadow over Ashdale quest. Okay, Anachronia base camp tutorial completed. Now I can just set up some workers to get resources from Lodestone and Meanwhile, I will go and do Herbie Werby minigame. Well, since I'm here, I might as well complete one achievement. The heck? Okay, attempt number two. This way, I'm not failing this achievement. Spinal surgery completed. There we go, 100 points collected at Herbie Werby. By the way, one funny trick. Look, once you collect 100, you cannot get any more XP, but if you have this grimy herb in your hand, you can still cash it out for experience. I guess that will be it for today. Now I will leave my account in here so that tomorrow, once I wake up and there will be weekly reset, I can do Herbie Werby one more time. I won't need to run again. That's how our group statistic looks at the moment. My brother was slacking a little bit, but I'm sure in a few days he will be catching up. Talking about journey achievements, we are currently at second tier. I think we should complete the second tier tomorrow, but we are not rushing these early tiers at all because as I said, we are doing marathon, not a sprint. If you are interested to see how our adventure goes, please consider subscribing. That will help a lot to my channel. I am logging out now. See you in a couple of days. Bye-bye.